Hi Makers, it's Anouk here from Makers Loft with another great project from our Makers Box range. Today we're going to make beaded key rings. What you will get in your pack is a range of beads including some spacer beads, the actual key rings, some skewers. You will also get some washi tape, some cord, some tassel floss, paints, paint brushes, paper towel. What you will need from home is a water jar, a glass or a cup, a pair of scissors, sharp if possible, and a hair dryer if you want to speed up the um, drying process of the paint. I've got myself one of these placemats to work on just in case I spill any paint that I don't um, ruin my timber tabletop. I'm going to start with choosing my colour theme. On a piece of paper you can choose what colours work well together. It's always a good idea to choose your colour theme before you start. So get your um, paints open your paint palette handy, paper towel, water jar and a piece of paper. I'm going to start with um, making my saffron which is a yellow and then a tiny little bit of black. Now make sure you make enough to cover a bead. Clean your brush well in between colours. I'm just using a tiny little bit of black. And I'm also going to add a, t a smidgen of the pink to add a little bit of warmth to it. My next colour is going to be a blue. I'm going to leave that as is. Use the pink. And I'm going to also make a mint green. So work out which colours go well together. So I've got my yellow, and I think yellow and blue work well together. Blue and pink work well together. So my blue is going to be my continuous colour. And then I'll be adding in the black and golds later on for features. So the next thing you need is your glass, your skewers and your washi tape. Place your skewers in your cup. Create a flag at the height of your cup and put the bead on and another flag above it. This way you can paint all around the bead, hold it upside down and it's not going to come off. So do that to all of your skewers. I'm going to start with designing my geometric bead and I'm going to use this um, finer brush to paint with and on this one I'm going to use my mint green and my blue so the smaller cubes are going to be blue and the diamonds I'm going to do in the mint green. I'm going to let that sit to dry for a little while and move on to my next bead. I quite like the half like that so I'm going to do that with this one. I'm going to leave half of it blank and I'm going to paint the other half in the yellow. So what you can do is you can get a little bit of your washi tape and set it across halfway and I'm going to paint that bottom half in my saffron. Now keep in mind that you're going to need to do more than one coat in many cases. I can see that this yellow definitely needs more than one coat. So I'm just going to leave that one to dry for a little bit now. I'll make this little one all mint green. 
and this one I'm going to paint all blue. Keep in mind to keep your layers of paint nice and thin. You're better off coming back and doing multiple coats rather than putting it on really thick in one go. I haven't decided yet what colour I'm going to do that one, so I'm going to get back to that later and first finish this one. So the next bit that I'm going to paint is the large diamond and I'm thinking that the in-between ones I'll make. You can use your hair dryer at this point to dry the paints a little bit faster. I've decided to um, be quite random and do the saffron and the hot pink on these little beads. going to put blue dots on the wood side of the bead so I'm going to use my fine skewer um, which is much smaller than the other ones that you would have received in your pack for the dotting so make sure you do one dot per dip and I'm going to start from the top so if you can work in an even layout but you can do it all random if you want as well And I might just do a tiny little cross right on the edge using my fine brush. On this bead I'm going to do really small little pink dots so I'm going to use the fine tip of my skewer and again one dot per dip. I think the blue bead would look really nice just with some confetti, white confetti on it. So I'm going to get my tiny little bit of white that I've got left out. Go back and do your second coat where it needs a second coat. Make sure your colours are nice and solid. Use the dryer to speed up the drying if you want to stay on the same bead. I'm going to put a gold dot on the squares or diamonds. And 
And I'm going to put a white love heart on the saffron squares. That finishes the painting of the beads. So clean up your painting area so that we don't get paint on any of the beads once they're dry or on our fingers. And now we are going to make the key ring. So with clean hands, get your cord, which we're going to thread the beads onto, your wire, Key ring, spacer beads, the tassel cap, and the cord for the tassel. You'll also need the card to wrap your tassel around and a pair of scissors. When the beads are dry, remove the beads from the skewers. So now we're going to prepare to thread the beads onto the cord. So this piece of wire is what we use to um, thread the beads onto the cord. So that needs to be folded in half like this. Pick up your cord and we're going to do what's called a lark's head knot. So one end is the fold and the other end is the cut ends. Onto the D-link of your key ring, we are going to feed through the loop, pull it through and bring the remainder of the cord through the loop and that's what's called a lark's head knot. I'm going to repeat that and show that to you again. Place your beads in order of how you want to thread them on. I like going from small to large but you can do it the other way around as well. So starting with your smallest bead at the top, line up the order of your beads with your spacer cap at the bottom. We're going to put the end of our cord, the opposite end to where the key ring is, onto our wire like so and we're going to pinch our wire so that it's a little bit tighter. Starting with your first spacer bead, feed your beads onto your cord. You'll now get an idea of what your key ring is going to look like, but we still need to make the tassel. Feed the tassel cap onto the bottom of your key ring. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. If you can't get it through, do one cord at a time. Grab your tassel floss and wrap it around your card like this. Remove it from the card. Tie a knot above the cap. And slide the cap to the top. Place your tassel in between your two cords and tie a knot. Make sure the knot is in the center of your tassel and pull it tight. 
Repeat that with another two knots. Cut your loops of your tassel open and tidy up your edges. Shorten the lengths of your cut board. Place them on the inside of your tassel. And your key ring is finished. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. Keep an eye out on our site for more workshops.